I wanted to go home to a comfy bed, go to sleep. That was my plan, but it didn't end that way. As I was about to walk in, step into his car, another car came and stopped right next to his car. And suddenly someone screamed. But then the next second I had two arms grabbing me from behind and I had a gun next to my head. I'm Monica Cora. I'm from Norway. I'm now 24 years old. Um, I grew, grew up back home in Norway with my family, two parents and my sister, and a little dog. And since I was a young, young girl, uh, my great passion was running. I started to compete for Norway uh, internationally. And then one day, I like, came back home from school. My mom was all excited and came running towards me and I didn't really understand what she was talking about. She mentioned the coach in the US and I was like, what is she talking about? And then as I got her to slow down, she told me that a coach from US had called me and wanted me to represent his team and had offered me a scholarship. And I just called back right away and said, you know what, I want to do this, send me the paperwork. Um, and with that, I came to the US in 2008 and started to represent SMU, cross country and track, long distance running. Yeah, my first year, I have to admit, it was challenging. Coming from the background, small town in Norway, different language, different culture, it was challenging at first. After my first year, another good friend of mine from Norway came over, same deal, same scholarship. And that was important for me to have her to come and I felt like we really could start our life in Dallas and we enjoyed it. When she came, I think we started to be more social too. It was easier for me to get out, meet new people. Um, and one day in, this was back in December 2009, um, we went to a soccer party, college party, um, an apartment to one of our friends. After a few hours, we were tired when we weren't used to going out and party. We were used to getting up early in the morning to run. And of course we had that planned out for the next morning too, so we decided to go home pretty early and I called up my friend and he would come over to pick us up. And as he arrived to this apartment, he called me and said, I'm standing, my car is parked right outside, so come out whenever you guys are ready. But that night, I wanted to go home to a comfy bed, go to sleep, that was my plan. But it didn't end that way. Um, as I was about to walk in, Step into his car, another car came and stopped right next to his car. And suddenly someone screamed. And I thought obviously then that these were people that were going to the party that we came from. So I um, turned my face and my attention towards the people screaming. Uh, but then the next second I had two arms grabbing me from behind and I had a gun next to my head. And that's when I was kidnapped and I was gang raped by three men. I have to say that I was so lucky in the way everything turned out for me. Um, I was found by the police um, 79 minutes after they took me off the street. Um, and only a few days later, all the perpetrators were found and they're all now in jail. One of them got 25 years, um, the other two got lifetime. And that was the first step in my healing. And I remember especially one moment that night um, in the police car on the way to the hospital, where I finally, I realized that I'm safe. I've been rescued and I've just been given my life back as a present. And at that moment, I made a decision that I will fight. I will fight until I win my life back. Um, I went. I won't let three criminals do something like that. I won't let them destroy my life. And that was the first thing that really helped me um, in my healing. Because every time I've had a tough day, um, I've been going back to that moment and I told myself, you know what? You made a decision. You made yourself a promise that you were going to fight. And I held on to that. So with that decision, um, I knew that I had to take a lot of steps to get my normal life back. Um, and one of the things that I started to do right after was to write about it all. Uh, and that really helped me to process all of it. As I wrote down every detail, I cried a lot. I got angry, I got sad, but in a way I was able to just put it down on paper and take it over. Another thing that helped me a lot is running. 
that's always been my passion and that's the thing in my life that I felt like gave me my identity and for me to just reclaim that right after instead of taking on a, an identity as a victim that's been important that was the one thing for me that reminded me of who I am and who I want to continue to be and that helped me that helped me to stay focused and to keep going after my goal to find a normal life I'm not angry for what happened. I'm thankful that I'm still alive because it could have ended differently. And we all know that. I want to show other victims that it is possible to find back to a normal life. It is possible to step out of that role as a victim. Um, I made it and so can everyone else. And that's what I want to assist other victims with because no one should live their life like that. One of the things that, I, that I've done is to start a foundation, um, the Monica Cora Foundation. And our mission is to kill the silence in society um, surrounding rape and abuse. And in that, help other victims to speak up and to ask for the help that they need to heal fully. I have three things that's been important for me and that I want to share with other people that I think is important to, to get over hardship like this. And the first thing is to take back control. Because often when you meet a challenge in life, it's easy to feel like I'm totally out of control, I don't know why this happens, and, and it's true. We cannot control everything that happens in life, but we can control how we respond to it. And the other thing is, that's been important for me is to let your passion in life, let it guide you and turn to that. Whenever you have a hard day, remind yourself of who you are by turning to your passion. Um, the last thing, um, is to always look into your future, keep your dreams alive. Because we all have bad days, I've had a lot of them, but I always stand focused on what I want for my future. I want to get here, I want to have a perfect future. I have all these dreams that I want to come true. And just keep believing in them. And even though you have a bad day here and now, you know what, this is what lays in front of you. And just keep going for it. I'm Monica Cora, and I challenge you to venture on.